fulfillment of God's purpose for your life in time. Tune in next time for another exciting segment of Effective Living. Effective Living is a production of Bahamas Faith Ministries International and subsidiaries worldwide. It has filled 50 million times, 800 million pages, and 100 million travelers every day. It's the world of the World Wide Web, the Internet Century. Welcome to the Information Age. The age of access and knowledge. We need knowledge to live, but wisdom to live effectively. Welcome to Effective Living. Effective Living Seminar, a program providing time-tested principles, precepts, and wisdom, equipping you to make quality choices for the challenges of the 21st century. And now, let us join Dr. Miles Monroe on Effective Living. I want to talk about the resurrection from the point of view of why it was necessary. Why was the resurrection necessary? You're going to learn a lot of things in a short time. So I want to encourage you to ask God for revelation, knowledge, and comprehension. Why was the resurrection necessary? Why does big to do about the resurrection? I'd like to begin by making an, an announcement that will make a little sense to you. And that is the resurrection was not for you. The resurrection was not for you and I. We got to explain that at the end of this time together. The greatest accomplishment of Jesus Christ was his resurrection. There are great leaders in the world. Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Baha'u'llah, uh, Haile, Haile Selassie, and all the great Gandhi, and great people who have done great works, written great theology and fantastic philosophies, but none of them claim they would be raised from the dead. Christianity is grouped with the big three. Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. They put Christianity with those three. But only Christianity claims an empty tomb. Buddha still has a tomb that they visit. Millions of pilgrims make their way to visit the tomb of Muhammad, and millions still go and worship at the feet of the Hindu gods, but there's no record of the body of this man named Jesus Christ anywhere. His resurrection separates him from everybody else. He's not a good teacher. He's not a good healer. There are a lot of those around. He is not just resurrected, but he said he is the resurrection. Hallelujah. His resurrection, resurrection was necessary in order for God's plan for mankind to be complete and fulfilled. If there was no resurrection, there could never be the fulfillment of God's original plan for mankind. I want to make a, another statement that may sound a little surprising, and that is you, yes, you made the resurrection necessary. If it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a need for a resurrection. The resurrection is necessary because of God's commitment 
to his own purpose and his own will and his own holiness. You made the resurrection necessary. Why? Because the purpose for the resurrection is established in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Everything is in chapter 1 and 2. Let's turn to chapter 1 of Genesis and find out where the resurrection became necessary. Verse 26 of chapter 1. Every time I think I know this verse, then the Lord reveals my ignorance. And God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Am I still reading? And over everything that creeps upon the ground. It's verse 27. I want to focus on a little statement here that caused the resurrection. It's the statement, let them. God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. He said, let who? Them. them. Say them loud. Them. Say it again. Them. Now, if I said to you, let us go in the cafeteria, who will go in the cafeteria? All of us will go. But if I said, let them, and I point specifically at someone, go in the cafeteria, who's going to go? So who's going to stay? So who has authority to go in the cafeteria? Them. Not us. God says, I want to create this creature. I'm going to call him man. And them are going to rule the earth. Them. Not us, but them. And his statement is very important. He says, let them have dominion over the earth. Not let us. We're not going to be a part of this thing. We're going to let them rule the earth we already rule heavens we already in charge of the invisible world the supernatural world everybody say supernatural say it loud write that word down it's going to be an important word in a minute everybody say supernatural again now it's amazing that spooky people like supernatural things god is supernatural can I spell the word for you? You probably spelled it incorrectly. You wrote it S-U-P-E-R-N-A-T-U-R-A-L. Am I right? Yes. Right. Good. Wrong. <laughs> the word comes from the, the original context of a word found in the New Testament. And it's the word supra. Not supra. It is S-U-P-R-A-N-A-T-R-A-L, N-A-T-U-R-A-L, right. Now, the word supernatural is used in our English, but the original word is supra, and supra means out of, write that down please, out of, when you add the word natural, it means what? Out of the natural. So to be supernatural or to be supernatural means that you are not in the natural. And the word natural, write it down by itself, is the word natural. Nature. Physical created things are called nature. So we call these things natural creation. Supernatural means that something is outside of the natural therefore it is in the spirit world completely hmm. the moment you leave the spirit world 
you are no longer supernatural. You become what the Bible calls spiritual. Write that word down. The word supernatural is not in the Bible. Let me come down and say that because some of you think it's in the Bible. Turn the TV a little louder. Can I say it again? The word supernatural is not in the Bible. Now Christians use it all the time. I mean the supernatural. No you're not. If you were you'd be dead. You cannot have a body and be supernatural. You can have a body and be spiritual. Now to be spiritual is all through the Bible. The Bible says walk in the spirit. Seek after the things of the spirit. You shall be spiritual. Spiritual means that you are in the natural. But you are in contact with the supernatural. So a spiritual person is an amazing creature. A spiritual person is a creature that has the capacity to be in the natural and at the same time in tune with, in touch with, in fellowship with, and in common union with the supernatural. That's a miracle creature. God is spirit. And that statement means that he is out of the natural. And God said, let us make man just like us in other words we're going to produce a spirit man was created supernatural there was a time when you did not have a body as a matter of fact god knew you when you were supernatural god told jeremiah before you was conceived in your mother's womb I knew you when you were in the supernatural. I knew you as a spirit being. And I appointed you to be a prophet as a spirit being. And I made you what you are as a spirit being. But then the time came for you to fulfill that assignment in the natural world. So I had to get you a body. So I put you in your mother's womb. And God said, let us make man. Everybody say man. man. Say it again. Say it again. Man. Write the word down. Man. Oh, I'm so excited this morning. Everybody got the word man down? Now the word man is the word Isha. I-S-H. Strange Hebrew word. Isha or Isha Isha. Man. Isha. Everybody say Isha. Isha. Come on, speak Hebrew with some feeling. Isha. Isha. Yeah. Sounds good. Tell your neighbor, I'm Isha. Come on, say it loud. I'm Isha. Boy, oh, you're getting some revelation this morning. Someone asks you, who are you? You should say Isha. Don't say secretary or carpenter. I'm Isha. Isha means spirit being. Write it down. So the word man is the name God gave to the spirit being that came out of God. God called him Isha man let us create man isha in our own material spirit but we got a problem here the next statement says and let them have dominion now that's not too bad because God is dominion and you came out of dominion and therefore you have dominion within you and so dominion was not really a major issue for God when God says let them have dominion the problem started when he said over the earth if God had just said let them have dominion then that means you would have stayed in the spirit world, in the supernatural world, and you would be responsible for dominating the invisible world. You would be in heavenlies with God. You would be able to rule in heaven. But God didn't stop there. He says, let them have dominion over what? The earth. Oh, no. Now, isn't it incredible that God made the earth before he created man in the process of Genesis I'm talking 
<laughs> chapter 1 verse 1 and God created the heavens and the earth and to do that for them to rule because the law of kingship says that if a king has a son as long as the son is with the king he can never be king he can only be priest or prince so unless that son is placed in a foreign territory he cannot be king so God says I will remove my children from me they are in me but I want them to be dominion spirits and rulers so I got to get them out of me and also away from heaven if I get them away from heaven they can rule because you know as long as a prince is with a king or queen he can never be king that's why Prince Charles is growing old and still ain't king anybody here with me I believe sometime he prays for mom to die because you see no matter how much you are a prince you can't be king unless the king moves the problem with God is that king ain't gonna die y'all talk to me man the Bible says you are sons of God you are princesses and princes of the earth but not of heaven and God wants you to rule and reign with him. So God says, I have to get you out of heaven. And if I'm going to do it, I got to create a place that is not supernatural. Because supernatural is my domain. Hey boy, say domain. domain. Say it loud. Domain. Give it an Easter morning shout. Domain. domain. Hey boy, say domain. domain. Say dominion. domain. Heaven is God's domain. It's where he dominates. But he wants you to dominate. So he creates a physical place to get you out of heaven so you too could be a king. So he creates the heavens and the earth. And then God says, let us create man in our own spirit image and likeness. And then let them have dominion over the earth. Well, I wish God had said, maybe maybe i wish god had said let us have dominion over the earth because if god had said let us have dominion over the earth that means god would have been a part of the program when god said let them have dominion he was putting you in charge of the physical world and he was staying out of it and god's plan was very simple god's plan was to share his rulership write that down this is very important to understand God's mindset when you read the Bible it says God is love that means God is love he loves to share he loves to make things a part of his blessing so he's not hoarding things he is love so God cannot rule heaven and be satisfied he wants to share that rulership so he has children and those children he gives his kingdom to but this time to rule in another area called the physical world and God then has a problem he has a spirit being he's right here you see him this is man but you can't see him right he's right here God just created him and God said to this man spirit being have dominion over the earth the spirit man says to God thank you but how do I get there and how do I rule and dominate and control the physical earth I am spirit my hand just goes through everything so in chapter 2 we have a record of how God produced the equipment for man to carry out the assignment look at chapter 2 verse 7 of Genesis oh hallelujah this is good stuff chapter 2 verse 7 it says the Lord God then formed man from what the dust of the ground and then breathed into this dust this lump of clay what the breath the life the essence of man from God and the man became what 
a living soul. The word soul is an important word here. It's a strange word in the Hebrew because it means everything came to life. Soul means his consciousness. He became conscious. The body, which was just dirt, became conscious. It became solical. It was able to hear and touch and feel and think and and have emotions and have senses in other words this dead lump of dirt became alive to its surrounding but it was possessed by a spirit being called Isha hey boy say Isha so Isha is now living in a physical body of dirt what kind of body is this dirt it's important to understand what God used he used what dust dirt your body is 100% dirt dust you are 100% spirit Isha Isha the original word for dirt and you put the word dirt down right next to that word please write the word humus H U M U S humus say humus Boy, this is a good teaching for you to learn to teach other people. This is the message of the whole gospel right here. Everybody say humus. You got it? What is humus? What is humus? Say it loud for the television audience. What is humus? What is it? So your body is? 100%? Quality? Black, white, yellow, pink? Humus. Dirt. Well, God took the humus and then he blew Isha into it. Who's Isha? Man. What's the dirt? Humus. So now God created a mystery. He has a humus man. Can you drop the us out of that word? You and I are called humans by God. What's a human? The word human means humus man. Spirit in a dirt body. Now you got to catch this. God says, let us make man. <laughs> then God formed the body from the dust of the ground and the Bible says God took the man and put him in the humus and then God gave this is the first time God named something he gave this combination a name he called it ready for this Adam write the word Adam down Adam and man are different <laughs> Man is Isha. Adam is different. The word Adam, it is spelled A-D-M-M. Strange Hebrew word, Adam. And it means dark earth. It also is translated rustic earth. Like rust. You ever seen rust? How does rust look? Just like me. The word Adam is a description and not a name. The name is actually man. But the description is Adam. God looked at what he made and God said, hmm, dark earth, come here. And the dark earth came walking. And God says, dark earth, you look pretty good in your earth suit, Isha. And Isha says, Toda Elohim. That means thank you, holy God. And God says, Adam, dominate the earth. Why? You are now able to handle it. You can touch it. You can cultivate. You can use it. You can produce. You can develop. You now have the equipment to handle it, dark earth. Now, there's a reason why God called the man dark earth. 
Because it was an exact description that God saw. Can God lie? I said, can God lie? All right. So the first man must have been real dark. I ain't got no problem with God. But God is smart because you all know the story about color. If you took all the colors in the rainbow, all the paint, go to the paint store, try it this week. Go to the paint store, buy every color on the shelf, just a little bottle, put them all in one little pail and stir them up, it turns black. <sighs> Keep the TV on, please. You see, God had to make sure that all the colors were in one body. Give the Lord a hand. He is awesome. He is awesome. He made sure that everybody was in one body because he was about to take everybody out of that one body. So he put everybody in the one body. So all of us, all of we is one. Y'all don't sound excited, man. I don't know, but this, I say all of we is one. Now, for those of America, that means uh, all of us are one, you know. <laughs> Acts chapter 17, verse 24 says, From one man, God made all the nations of the world. The word nations, that means ethnos, which means ethnic. From one man, God brought every ethnos, because they were in there. Adam, hey boy, say Adam again. Oh, this is so important. Adam is the name God gave to the body. <laughs> but the resident is called what? Isha. Man. So man is living in Adam, dark earth. And God took the man, verse 15, chapter 2, verse 15, and he put him in the garden of Eden and said to the man, who's he talking to? The man. Come on, read this with me. And the Lord took the man. Everybody say the man. Oh, Lord, help me. God never talks to, to Adam. Adam just a piece of equipment. Whenever, that's why God doesn't talk to male and female. He doesn't. He talks to man. If any man will come unto me. If any man will confess. His, in other words, he's talking to the inner spirit. That's right. That's right. Whether you were a male Adam or a female Adam, you is man. God took the man, put him in the garden, and therefore Adam was in the garden because we have a man go. Adam, go. Remember the Bible says, ready for this? The Bible says, there is no life in the flesh. The Spirit giveth the body life. Thank you for joining us on this segment of Effective Living. For a copy of this teaching and for information on seminars, conferences, books, tapes, and resource catalogs, write to Effective Living, PO Box N9583, Nassau, Bahamas. Or visit us on the World Wide Web at www.bfmmm.com or email us at bfmadmin at battelnet.bs. And remember, effective living is not filling your time with busyness, but the fulfillment of God's purpose for your life in time. Tune in next time for another exciting segment of Effective Living.